Hello fellow smart home makers! Today we will be creating a romantic scene fully automated with ESP Home and Home Assistant. The idea is to use some infrared controlled LED candles and then control them via ESP Home from Home Assistant. This gives us the great possibility to integrate it with our scenes and automations in Home Assistant. Once we have that, we just need to define a trigger which will automatically make the LED candles light. This trigger could be, for example, a voice command or an occupancy sensor identifying that someone is sitting on the sofa or any other trigger you might think of. I'm really curious to hear about your additional trigger ideas, so please just let me know in the comments. But now, let's dive into the solution! So what do we need for this solution? First of all, we need some infrared controlled LED candles. You can nowadays find them everywhere online. Secondly, we need an ESP powered development board, like an ESP32 dev board. Thirdly, we need an infrared transmitter as well as an infrared receiver. Both are available as cheap breakout boards, which can be easily connected to the ESP32 dev board. Now, let's first have a look how these infrared controlled LED candles work. Usually, you get one, two or three of those infrared LED candles in a package and they come with an infrared controller. With that, you have different possibilities. For example, you can just turn it on or you can turn it off. And those are the most important commands for us in order to be able to automate turning on the candle. What we want to do is we want to be able to send the commands from this infrared controller directly from Home Assistant. And we want to do that via our little ESP Home device. For this, we need to first teach the ESP Home device the different commands. And this is where our infrared receiver comes into play. Because we will connect the infrared receiver to the ESP32 dev board and then we just press the buttons on the infrared control and then receive them via ESP Home. We will then be able to read out the actual command that was sent to ESP Home store it and then later on use our infrared transmitter to send it out ourselves via ESP Home. This is how our prototype for recording the infrared signals looks like. We simply have an ESP32 dev board and we connected an infrared receiver as well as an infrared transmitter. With this we can record the infrared signals and then play them back with the transmitter to test them. Have a look into our ESP Home YAML code. On the top part here we have the standard de definitions. We have substitutions for the name, we have our ESP Home section, we have the ESP32 board definition, we enable logging, we enable the Home Assistant API, we allow over-the-air updates, we pass the Wi-Fi credentials, we also enable a fallback hotspot in case the Wi-Fi connection fails. And now comes the interesting part. We define our remote receiver device. This is the infrared receiver, which is located on GPIO 4. And we want to dump all. This means that the remote receiver component will dump all the different protocols that have been identified, or it, it thinks that it has identified all these different protocols from the infrared signal that has been received. This will be dumped to the console and by that we can then try them out with the remote transmitter component to see which one actually works or works best. The remote transmitter device is located on GPIO 16 and we have to set a carrier duty percent of 50%. Now, I have already tried all these different buttons out with the remote receiver which have then been dumped to the console. I'll show this to you in a couple of seconds. 
And then I have figured out that the NEC protocol seems to work best for the LED candles that I have. With this NEC protocol you have to define an address, this is always the same, and a command. And the command of course differs between the different buttons of the infrared control. Now we have this command candle on, I can define an icon for this and most importantly when turning on this button the remote transmitter shall send this command via the NEC protocol to the candles. And this works. We have the possibility to turn the candle on, we can turn it off, we can set the brightness up, we can set the brightness down, we can switch to candle mode. In this mode the candle kind of flickers a little bit to kind of imitate an actual fire. Or we have the light mode, in this mode it's a more constant light. And we have the different timers. Of course I actually don't need the timers because I'm able to set all the timers also via ESP Home or via Home Assistant, but I just wanted to make sure that I have all the buttons that are available on the actual remote control also available via ESP Home and Home Assistant. Now I want to show you how you can read out the commands sent by the actual infrared remote control. We are in the ESP Home console. We have already compiled our ESP Home YAML code and flashed it to the ESP32 dev board. We have connected the remote receiver and now we push a button on the infrared remote control and you can see that different protocols will be recognized. We now can use those and pass them on to the remote transmitter component to test out which one works best. And if we try it out you can see that it works perfectly. But it is still a kind of prototypical device. I wanted to have a sleeker design which fits better into my living room. I want to go for a smaller ESP board. And my decision is to go with the Wemos D1 Mini with an ESP8266 chip, which is a quite cheap and also small device. And for this device, together with the infrared transmitter, I wanted to build a nice housing. And you can see the housing here. I have designed a housing which in the front can fit the infrared transmitter and in the back it can fit perfectly this Wemos D1 mini controller. You can see this is the body. Here is a cutout for the USB connection. Here is a cutout for the infrared LED. And we also have some screw holes so that you can attach the lid to it and the lid can then be screwed onto the bottom part. Now let's push this to our 3D printer. Besides printing the housing, we also need to solder the infrared transmitter to the D1 Mini. And here we can see how our result looks like. The components fit perfectly into the housing. And when we close the lid and connect the USB cable, we have a beautifully packaged infrared controller. Now let's see this device in action. If we use Home Assistant to turn the candle on, it will start lighting. We can now turn it off again. We can also turn it on again. We can switch to light mode or to the candle mode. And we can turn it off again. Just so that you see it works perfectly. I really hope you liked this solution. With this solution, you're now able to automatically turn on your LED candles and turn them off again every time you want to have them turned on or turned off. I think this is really a super simple and great solution. If you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell in order to be notified also about my upcoming videos. See you later. Thank you. Bye bye.